Calling all Ghostbusters fans, today we're taking a closer look at some hilarious bloopers and fascinating behind-the-scenes secrets from the classic 1984 Ghostbusters film. Join us as Facts First presents This Scene Wasn't Edited. Look again at the Ghostbusters blooper. The Supernatural Origins of Ghostbusters Ghostbusters may be a beloved comedy classic, but its roots are surprisingly personal for co-writer Dan Aykroyd. Growing up in a family deeply fascinated by the paranormal, Aykroyd was surrounded by tales of seances and attempts to contact the spirit world. His great-grandfather, a renowned spiritualist, and his grandfather, who sought ways to communicate with the dead via radio frequencies, instilled in Aykroyd a lifelong curiosity about the supernatural. Aykroyd's father even wrote a book titled A History of Ghosts, The True Story of Seances, Mediums, Ghosts, and Ghostbusters, further cementing the family's connection to the otherworldly. These experiences played a crucial role in shaping the original Ghostbusters concept, which Aykroyd initially pitched as a vehicle for himself and John Belushi. The Evolution of the Script Aykroyd's initial treatment, called Ghost Smashers, was a far cry from the final film. Set in the future, it followed a team of ghost-battling adventurers across multiple dimensions, operating out of a converted gas station in New Jersey. The story included outlandish elements like a skeletal biker terrorizing a town and an epic climax with the Ghostbusters traversing alternate realities. While the core idea of a group of heroes battling the supernatural remained, the script underwent significant changes. Director Ivan Reitman saw potential in the concept, but encouraged Aykroyd to ground the story in modern-day Manhattan and focus on the relatable going-into-business angle. With the help of Harold Ramis, who came on board as a co-writer, they reshaped the script during a Martha's Vineyard vacation. Casting the Ghostbusters The script was originally written with John Belushi in mind for Peter Venkman, playing opposite Aykroyd. But tragedy struck when Belushi passed away in 1982, leaving the project in limbo. As the script evolved, other comedic heavyweights were considered, including Eddie Murphy and Chevy Chase, before Bill Murray ultimately came on board. For the role of Egon Spengler, the brilliant but socially awkward scientist, a host of big names were in the running. Christopher Walken, John Lithgow, Christopher Lloyd, and Jeff Goldblum were all considered for the part. But ultimately, Harold Ramis, who co-wrote the script, stepped into the role. Sigourney Weaver's unforgettable audition for Dana Barrett involved a bold choice that showcased her comedic chops and willingness to fully commit. Weaver got down on all fours and howled like a demonic dog, leaving a lasting impression on the filmmakers. Ad-libbed magic much of Ghostbusters' enduring charm stems from the talented cast's comedic improvisations, which elevated the already strong script. Bill Murray's iconic quips like, We came, we saw, we kicked its ass, after the memorable Slimer capture scene, were the result of the filmmakers letting the former SNL star riff on numerous takes. Rick Moranis was originally cast as the nerdy accountant Louis Tully and took the opportunity to make the character his own. He completely rewrote Lewis's dialogue, tailoring it to his strengths as a performer. This led to classic moments like Lewis's party scene, where he awkwardly interacts with guests while trying to impress them with his financial prowess. Bloopers that made the cut Despite the film's polished final product, several bloopers and unintentional moments of hilarity made it into the theatrical release. During the climactic battle with Gozer, as the Ghostbusters dodge falling debris on the rooftop of Dana's apartment building, a large styrofoam boulder can be seen tumbling towards a police barricade. Instead of crashing through the barrier, as one might anticipate from a heavy piece of concrete, the lightweight prop bounces off the barricade and flies out of frame. Ray Stance's tie also seems to have a mischievous streak, appearing and disappearing throughout scenes at the Sedgwick Hotel. This continuity error adds an unintentional layer of humor to the already chaotic ghost-catching sequence. Similarly, a proton pack can be spotted on a hotel housekeeping cart in one shot, only to vanish in the next, an unexpected Easter egg for observant viewers. Even Lewis Tully's wardrobe falls victim to the occasional blooper, as Lewis, possessed by the demon Vince Clortho, crashes a party at the Tavern on the Green restaurant, he suddenly dons a tan jacket over his t-shirt, only for it to disappear in the next exterior shot. The Ectomobile's Hidden Abilities Early drafts of the Ghostbusters script hinted at the Ectomobile possessing supernatural powers of its own. The converted ambulance was intended to have a mischievous streak lashing out at those who wronged it. 
One particularly intriguing deleted scene featured the ectomobile using telekinesis to retaliate against a police officer attempting to write a parking ticket. While this subplot was ultimately cut from the final film, it offers a glimpse into the wild and imaginative ideas that fueled the creative process behind Ghostbusters. Lost Scenes and Alternate Storylines As with any film, not every scene or storyline made it into the final cut. Director Ivan Reitman shot footage in Central Park featuring Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd as homeless men offering absurdist commentary on the Ghostbusters adventures. While undoubtedly humorous, Reitman ultimately decided that their presence might confuse audiences and detract from the main storyline. Perhaps most surprising is the revelation that in earlier drafts, the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man's rampage could have been overshadowed by an even more outlandish threat, a giant version of Dana's pet lizard terrorizing the city. Although this alternative ending was never shown on screen, it showcases the limitless creativity and daring approach that characterized the making of Ghostbusters. The Missing Marshmallow Man Tie Eagle-eyed viewers might notice a small but amusing inconsistency during the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man's climactic appearance. In the shots where the towering mascot is first hit by the Ghostbusters proton streams, his iconic red tie is noticeably absent. The reason behind this blooper is a simple case of forgetfulness. Bill Bryant, the actor inside the Stay Puff suit, was so focused on attaching the sparking electronics to his costume that he neglected to put on the tie before filming started. With the scene captured in a single take, the missing tie made its way into the final cut, an unintentional yet charming reminder of the challenges and quirks of practical filmmaking. Ghostbusters Invade New York while much of Ghostbusters was filmed on meticulously crafted sets in Los Angeles, the production also made extensive use of iconic New York City locations to ground the story in reality. The New York Public Library served as the backdrop for the film's memorable opening sequence, where the Ghostbusters encounter the librarian ghost. Exterior shots cleverly incorporated the real-life scaffolding from the library's ongoing restoration project at the time, adding a layer of authenticity to the scene. Other notable locations included Columbia University, which gave the filmmakers permission to shoot on campus as long as the school was not identified by name. The famed Lincoln Center, bustling Columbus Circle, and picturesque Tavern on the Green in Central Park also make appearances. But the Big Apple filming wasn't without challenges. The production team often found themselves shooting guerrilla style without proper permits to capture the necessary footage. This led to memorable moments like Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd being chased by a real security guard during a montage sequence, adding an unscripted layer of excitement to the scene. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite scene from Ghostbusters? Let us know in the comments section below.